Hi everybody, I'm Mr. Anime, and boy, do I have a show for you. Let's go. This is just an update video to let you guys know that uh, I'm going to reward myself with a, probably a two or three week break coming up here from YouTube videos, uh, anime reviews in particular. I might do some blog stuff. Um, I want to thank you guys a lot for sticking with me and watching the channel. Uh, I got more subscribers than ever. I have more views than ever. And uh, everything is going really good. And I'll, uh, I'll see you with some blog videos. Thanks for watching my channel. In the early days of YouTube, before terms like influencer or content creator were in wide usage, there was a more homemade and freeform feel to the platform. Scripted videos were generally amateur comedic skits, shot in a lo-fi style on home cameras with light-hearted content. But sometimes the content took a darker turn and sometimes the creators themselves went down shady and sinister paths. What is up, Iwu crew? Today, we're looking at the rise and fall of Mr. Anime, aka Trey Eric Sessler. Trey was an early YouTuber who enjoyed a wide following across the platform, creating anime reviews and comedic skits. As Trey's popularity across YouTube grew, his videos took on a darker edge and tone. However, no one could have predicted what was actually going on inside his head, or the horror that would take place on the morning of March 20th, 2012. Now, let's get into it. Trey Eric Sessler was born on August 3rd, 1989, to Rhonda and Lawton Sessler. His older brother, Mark, was born four years earlier in 1985. They were a typical family with an average American home life, with Lawton working as a local elementary school teacher and Rhonda working at the local newspaper, The Waller Times. The family lived together in a one-story ranch-style home in Waller, Texas. However, trouble within the family home reportedly started after Trey dropped out of college and was unable to find employment. Trey described himself as a neat, which is an often derogatory term, meaning not in employment, education, or training. Allegedly, he often clashed with his dad over the fact that he did not have a job. Tara Sandoval, who knew Trey since sixth grade, described him by saying that at school and in college, he wasn't in the most popular crowd. He had a small, tight-knit circle of friends who were also interested in anime and films, just as he was. Tara said, he wasn't a social butterfly, but if you approached him, he was so nice. Yet, Trey's aunt, Wenda Frierson, later described Trey as peculiar when she was interviewed by the Houston Chronicle. She said, I'll have to admit, he was quite strange. But naturally, I wasn't going to tell Trey's parents that he acts peculiar. His father was a very private person and never really discussed him with me at all. She also reported that she believed he was on some kind of medication for a health condition, but didn't know what it was exactly. On September 14, 2006, Trey Eric Sessler registered his LensCap Productions account on YouTube and his persona, Mr. Anime, was born. YouTube was Trey's outlet from the pressures of the real world and his real life, where he could talk about his love for anime and interact with like-minded people across the internet. Online, compared to the odd and eccentric way Trey was perceived by some of those around him in real life, Mr. Anime was known for having a down-to-earth, straightforward, and relatable personality. This contrasted with many popular YouTube personalities at the time, who would often have exaggerated characters as their channel hook. Trey's straightforward way of talking to the camera while eating a snack and chatting about anime is recognizable in 2021 as something we might see from a streamer on Twitch, but it was uncommon in 2006 and gave Mr. Anime his popularity among the community. There it is, Evangelion. And right off the bat, I gotta say that I really love the box it comes in. I mean, look at this. 
It's hard 10 individual DVDs. I mean, this is the, probably one of the best box covers I've ever seen. With 323 videos and his popular Mr. Anime Reviews series, Mr. Anime commanded a small but dedicated audience, with over a million views across all his videos. He is acknowledged with kickstarting an interest in anime across the platform, with many in the early anime YouTube community crediting him with giving them the confidence and inspiration they needed to create their own videos about the anime they enjoyed. Mr. Anime was widely known across the internet, and even users who did not watch his videos still knew of the Mr. Anime Reviews character and series. Now, some of you may say something like, you know, Mr. Anime, Mr. Anime, please, give any after a break, you know? But no, if it had given me a break a hundred goddamn episodes ago, it wouldn't be a problem. But the show keeps going, it's obnoxious, it gets annoying, Naraku never dies, in the movies he never dies, in the manga he's still not dead. What else is there to say? Trey would often write and star in his YouTube skits with his brother, Mark, who he was incredibly close with, and described as his best friend. Trey also made videos where he spoke with the camera frankly about his opinions, including one where he shared his fears around the rise in mass shootings across America. Hey everybody, season two here, and today I'm running on something um, a little bit, right? Um, yes, I'm running on something a little bit anime unrelated. I'm ranting on all the shootings that have been happening. I'm a firearms owner myself, but uh, it's, uh, it, it is a little bit disturbing to know that you could be a victim in something like this at these times. All the people that were victims, you think it won't happen to me, but sometimes it does. But seriously, every day I open Yahoo, I'm like, well, time to see what today, time to see what today's shooting is, and hey, there's another one. So I don't know when it's gonna stop. I think it's why, why. In that video, he said it was unnerving to believe someone could be the victim of a violent shooting at any moment. As Trey continued his videos throughout the years, they slowly began to become darker in tone and content. You show his feet. He, he fell in mud. It's funny. And there was a little girl who was trying to follow us and she almost fell and broke her neck and I would have filmed it and showed it to y'all, but I, then I would have helped. Not like most cameramen where they, they keep filming accidents and they don't help. Uh, but yeah, that's the reason I can't bring y'all a review this week, but when we come back, we'll be doing any Ashes movies three and four and uh, they're, I think, better than one and two. See you around. Trey changed his regular YouTube video introduction into a stylized edit of him shooting himself in the stomach. In 2011, his viewers noticed the most prominent changes in Trey's behavior. One thing his followers noted was that he started describing how different family pets were going missing, sharing on his Facebook page that they were looking for the family pet rabbit. What his followers couldn't have known at the time was that all of these strange changes in Trey were hints about what was to come. You are out of here. You are gone. Leave my place. Internet messages began circulating about Trey's conduct offline, with people commenting they had heard alleged rumors in the area local to Mr. Anime about him running around the town at night with a gun, shooting empty buildings, and killing animals. Some users even reported that they had seen him at night themselves committing these acts. Hmm. Whatever. Are you going? Yeah, you're going home. His alleged alcohol misuse was also rumored throughout this time. Trey uploaded a video on December 11th, 2011, titled very bad news, please watch, in which he shared that he had been diagnosed with pneumothorax. Pneumothorax is a medical term for a collapsed lung, caused when a hole in the lung is leaking air out into the chest cavity. It is unknown what caused Trey's lung to collapse or how collapsed his lung was. However, pneumothorax is normally caused by trauma to the chest. Trey explained to his viewers that he was short of breath, in pain, and not sleeping much at all, asking any of his religious viewers to pray for him to get better. Soon after, in early March 2012, when Trey was 22, 
he uploaded his third to last video, arguably the most famous video from this case and ominously entitled, Mr. Anime is planning something. In the video, Trey shares that he has some big plans coming up and he will be unable to commit to his usual upload schedule. Well, hi everybody, it's Mr. Anime here and I'm recording on my MacBook's web camera and my MacBook's from like four years ago so the web camera's not that great so you'll have to bear with me. This is just an update video to let you guys know that uh, I'm going to reward myself with a, probably a two or three week break coming up here from YouTube videos, uh, anime reviews in particular. I might do some blog stuff. Um, I want to thank you guys a lot for sticking with me and watching the channel. Uh, I got more subscribers than ever. I have more views than ever and uh, everything is going really good. So um, I'll probably be putting out some blog videos like I said. And I hope you enjoy those blog videos. I hope you definitely enjoy those. And I'll, uh, I'll see you with some blog videos. Thanks for watching my channel. Trey uploaded a further video shortly after this, describing that he had found himself his dream job in the film industry. And he was very happy and looking forward to his future. He did not share any further information about which company or what his job role would be and there has been no evidence that he had actually obtained a job in the film industry. This fact has led many to believe that the job did not exist. A week later, on the night of the 19th of March, 2012, Trey was reportedly binge drinking throughout the night into the morning. At some point in the early hours, he called his mother into their garage. There, he shot her at point-blank range four times in the chest. Rhonda died instantly. Trey later stated in a police interview that this was a defining moment for him. In his confession, he stated, I couldn't just go and tell my brother and dad and tell them I've just killed mom. He was now fully committed to his plan, seeing no way to go back or stop what he had just started. His brother Mark, upon hearing the noise of gunshots in the garage, called out to Trey to investigate. Trey went inside the house where he shot his brother in the head. Hearing all the noise, Lawton, Trey's father, sat up in bed confused and asked what was going on. Trey stepped away from his brother, who was lying on the floor in a pool of his own blood, and into his parents' bedroom. There, he shot his father in the head twice. In his confession, Trey explained that after shooting his father dead in the bedroom, he then retraced his footsteps through the house to ensure that nobody else was still, quote, in pain. Mark, who had miraculously survived the one gunshot wound to his head, was still alive. He had managed to crawl into the bathroom and lock the door behind himself while Trey was in the bedroom, murdering their father. Realizing his brother was still alive, Trey broke down the bathroom door, finding Mark, who he had once described as his best friend, curled up in the fetal position on the floor. Trey shot him again in the head, this time ensuring his death. Trey then retraced his steps back to his mother, shooting her in the head also. Later in Trey's confession, he stated, The thing about my family is I would protect them with my life, but if anyone were going to hurt them, it would be me. Following the murder of his entire family, Trey proceeded to trash and destroy the house. He flew into a rage and wrecked the contents of his family home and killed all their remaining pets, scrawling confessions and admissions of guilt on the walls, doors, and cabinets, such as, I will never forgive my state of mind, and I love my family. Trey then fled the house in his 2010 black Ford Mustang, taking his rifle with him. The police were called by worried neighbors who had heard the gunfire coming from the house, as well as concerned relatives who could not get in contact with the family. As police arrived to the Sessler home at 1 p.m. on March 20, 2012, they found a message written on the front door. It read, I will never forgive myself. I don't know why I did this. God forgive me. 
police at the scene described the house as, it looked like a war zone, a tremendous amount of damage inside. A manhunt then ensued for Trey Sessler, which ended when he was located at a friend's house less than 24 hours later. He was arrested and charged with three counts of capital murder. Investigators began interrogating Trey, trying to understand why a seemingly normal 22-year-old would murder his family in such a way. Trey immediately confessed to the killings. The police described his demeanor in the interrogation as constantly changing and shifting. He appeared to go back and forth between stoic and matter-of-fact about what had happened, bluntly and unemotionally telling the police in detail what he had done before he would shift to become frantically over-emotional and upset, seemingly unable to process that he had murdered his whole family. What wasn't clear, however, was Trey's motive for the killings. Through interrogation, the disturbing details of his full plan emerged. As Trey fled his family home, he drove and parked at the car park of his old school, Waller Junior High. He confessed, he planned to commit a mass shooting with the highest body count for the time, basing his intentions around the Columbine School shooting massacre. His twisted aspiration was to become the biggest mass shooter, murdering at least 70 people and gaining infamy throughout the country. His plan involved waiting for the Waller Junior High homecoming game, where he would shoot into the stands. The ensuing panic and chaos would mean Trey could then shoot and kill as many people as possible before he himself was shot or caught by police. Trey had even been practicing for the execution of his plan. He explained to the police that he had been going out at night around the town of Waller, starting small fires and shooting empty buildings. Trey had been killing his pets and other animals he caught at night in order to prepare himself to take human lives. The internet rumors about his offline behavior were not just rumors. This mass shooting that Trey had likely been planning in his mind for several years was the motive for the murder of his family. He explained to the police he could not bear the shame and guilt they would feel from knowing that he was a mass murderer. He claimed he killed them in mercy to spare them the knowledge of the school shooting he was about to commit. When asked why Trey abandoned the school shooting plan and went to his friend's house instead, Trey explained that the murder of his family had made everything too real. Now that he had taken human life, especially the lives of the people he loved the most in the world, he realized the weight of his actions and he could no longer continue with his sick plan. This was no longer a delusion or a fantasy that he was acting out. The full weight of the situation hit him as he sat in his black Ford Mustang in the car park of Waller Junior High, and he knew that he would never see his family again. This moment of clarity likely stopped a much larger tragedy from occurring in Waller, Texas. It was later reported that Trey had a morbid fascination with the deaths of his family. Asking interrogators for details about autopsy reports, and asking which shot delivered the fatal blows to his family members. He also confessed to police that he couldn't go two or three days without thinking about committing violent acts. Further evidence of Trey's mental decline leading up to the murder of his family was soon uncovered. Two weeks before the murders, Trey had called the police stating that bullets were whizzing past his head and that he had guns and he, quote, was ready. As well, a high school friend who had become a police officer stated that Trey had called him and quizzed him about the legality of body armor for civilians in the week prior. When police searched the Sessler house and Trey's computers and notebooks, they found that Trey was obsessed with serial killers to the point of grading their work and giving them ratings, eerily similar to the ratings he gave in his anime reviews. The police felt this serial killer ranking was to help Trey formulate his own plan for a mass shooting, studying which approach would give him the highest kill count. They noticed that he had a particular obsession with the videos of the Columbine School shooting, and Eric and Dylan, 
who committed the massacre that killed 13 people in October 1999. He had also been studying aerial photographs to help him plan his massacre on Waller Junior High School. Trey pled guilty to the murders and was sentenced in August 2012. He was given life without parole and has not appealed or contested this ruling. It is reported that he believes he belongs behind bars. In the years since this case occurred, there have been many rumors circulating around the internet that Trey had at some point taken his own life or died. However, these are unfounded, as he is currently incarcerated under the Texas Department of Criminal Justice at the Jester IV facility. This facility houses 550 of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice's most mentally ill and violent offenders. It is often used as a short-term holding facility when prisoners are experiencing a violent mental health break. However, some prisoners are reportedly held for much longer. It is unknown exactly how long Trey has been at Jester IV, but he is still currently held there as of March 2021. And internet comments in April 2020 also report him as being held at Jester IV. From this, we may assume he could be one of the long-term residents at Jester IV. Trey's LensCap Productions YouTube account was not terminated by YouTube until September 2020, with his eerie videos left up for more than eight years after the murders. Of course, like everything online, these videos still exist and will likely continue to be re-uploaded across different platforms.